Hey, you guys, this is Danielle. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, like and subscribe. This is where you can come and heal and love and live out your purpose or find your purpose, okay, and your identity in Christ. And he will help you to fulfill that purpose by his grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So first, you guys, I just want to start off with a quick prayer because I know that you know how the enemy works when God is trying to sow seeds into his people. The enemy surely tries to come behind the sower, right, and uproot those seeds, all right? And I want these seeds to be planted in the soil on fertile ground that will uproot and spring into the tree and the branches that will produce mighty fruit in the mighty name of Jesus, all right? So, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for just being with me right now. I thank you for the spirit of the Holy Presence, Father God, right now. I thank you that you said that you would give me the role, Father, and that you would put it in my mouth, and you would give me the words to speak and to do not be afraid because you will give me the words to speak and to steward unto your people, Father God, that you will give me the strength to... In, the seeds, Father God, to plant into your people that will lead them back unto you, Father God. I thank you that you are trying to reach all of your lost people at this time. And even the people that are already with you, Father God, that you're trying to replenish and refresh their soul, Father God, because all of us need the strength from you, Father God, and the power of your might, Father God, to be with us each and every day, to guide us in all of our ways, Father God, that your will will be done. Father God, that in all that we do, that you may be exalted and glorified because you love us, Father God, and you want the best for us, Father God. And no matter what that looks like here in the natural, that we are moving into the season of what you have called us in the spiritual realm, in the supernatural, Father God, that you are bringing your people up during this time, the people that really love you, that really seek you, that have been obedient, Father God, that have been trying to fulfill your call and what you have called them to do, Father God, that are trying to fulfill that role in the anointing that you have placed over their life, Father God. And we just thank you for being with us. And we thank you for Psalms 91 over this message today that it will penetrate the hearts of your people and those seeds will be planted on fertile ground and they will sprout up and be the individuals that you have called them to be in your mighty name. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. So the, today the Lord led me to John four, okay, chapter four. And um, for those of you, you can go back and read it, but basically it's Christ witnessing to the woman at the well. All right. And I'm just going to start at uh, John four twenty one, And it says, Jesus said to her, women, woman, excuse me, believe me, this hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the father. You worship what you do not know. And we know what we worship for salvation of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And that is uh, John 4, 21 through 24 that I just read. Okay. And so I want you guys to know that a lot of people are out here saying that they love God, you know, and they know the Lord, but do they really worship God? Not only in the spirit, okay, because God is a spirit, but in truth. And a lot of people don't want to pretty much obey the truth, which is in God's word. And also whatever the revelation that God gives you in the spirit. Okay. And so we have to do both. Okay. We can't be lukewarm over here. Like God is really separating people. Okay. He's doing the threshing sledge. Okay. The threshing sledge, which is a separation that is happening of who are his true believers that are willing to go the distance, who are willing to go through the suffering, who are willing to be persecuted, who are the mighty army of people that are going to follow God no matter what it looks like, no matter what they have to go through, who is still going to worship him and, and believe in him even when things don't look that great, okay? Even when it's calling them to be separated from all of the worldly things, will you still follow him and will you still trust him and will you still worship him, okay? Will you still have the fire in you that he has placed inside of you and willing to let that fire, you know, pour out here on the land through 
the word of God, okay? Because you're going to be so lit for Christ in the mighty name of Jesus, okay? And so he is raising up his true church, okay? If you don't know who the church is, that is you. You are the church. Your body is the church. It is the temple in the mighty name of Jesus and which hosts the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is God's spirit who lives and dwells inside of you. So you can go out here and do what he has called you to do. Do what he has anointed you to do. Ask him for the fresh oil to be poured over you in the mighty name of Jesus so you can get the revelation that you need in order to fulfill the call and the will that he has for your life. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray that each and every one of you gets this revelation and gets this message in the mighty name of Jesus because the Lord also went on to say in John 4 25 the woman said to him I know that the Messiah is coming because the Lord is coming this is what is happening throughout the earth the shaking is happening to shake things in alignment for Jesus Christ to come all right. So he can shake out the old wine and put in the new wine so he can take down the people that have been in high places down to the low places and exalt his people, his chosen people, the true church. All right. The true remnant of the body of Christ to put them in those positions to help steward his people back unto him, to lead them into the way of righteousness and salvation for Jesus Christ. Amen. So. It says, again, in John 4, 25, the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. All right? So he was letting you know, her know that I am the son of the father who sent me to come here onto the earth. All right? All right? To be in the flesh like of everybody else because he knows everything that we endured because he sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ and that's why the only way to the father is through Jesus Christ because he is made in his image right and he came down here to to show us the way to live right so also we're going over to John 4 34 and, and Jesus said to them my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work do you not say there are still four months, then and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored, and others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. So if you listen to my message yesterday with Ezekiel 17, 22 through 24, you know, the Lord was basically saying how he was removing people in high places and prominent places and putting his people that have been, you know, hanging out here, you know, in the lower positions and not really getting to the things that the Lord has for them. Right. And he was removing those people in those positions to exalt his people and put them in those high places, a position of authority to be rulers. Right. And, and have dominion here in certain territory. And this kind of just lets you know that you don't even have to toil anymore for the ones that have been walking and being obedient with God and answering the call and doing what he says to do and you just been obedient and doing it by faith he is now going to be putting you in positions that you didn't even have to have the certification for let's say okay he is putting you there because of who he is called in the anointing and the authority that he's already given you from the time that you were in your mother's womb okay he already had a plan for you when you were in your mother's womb all right before he puts you in your mother's womb that's why he says i knew you before okay and so he is letting you know that i'm going to put you in positions that you haven't even labored the work has already been done for you you're just going to be reaping off of the labors that everybody else had been working in the field in right and i'm going to put you right on in there all right and you're going to reap all right. You're not going to have to toil anymore like you used to toil before in your old ways. Right. Because he is doing a new thing. According to Isaiah 43 and 19, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Right. So he is trying to show us to learn how to sit back to rest in him and to wait on him and watch how he will move in your life and watch how he will bring things together. If you would just wait on him and allow him to do what he said he's going to do. 
All right. Allow him to show up for you. Allow him to show how he will provide for you. Allow him to show you how he takes care of his people, his remnant. OK, in the mighty name of Jesus. The other scriptures um, that I have to go along with this as well is that. Let me see, honey, just hold on and bear with me because I was flipping up and through here today. OK, so Isaiah 40. 11 says he will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with the young. Okay. So the Lord will gather you. Okay. And he will lead you. All right. He will not forsake you. He's telling you, do not be dismayed for he is with you. No matter what you're going through, he is right there. He will carry you. All right. So please stay in the shadow of his wing. Okay. So he can cover you. He can give you the revelation so he can give you the steps and guide you to where you need to be going in this season. Amen. Also Isaiah 41, eight, it says, but you Israel are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen the descendants of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from his farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not casted you away. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All right? So if you stay in the presence of the Lord, and you have the fear of the Lord, of knowing that you're not going to step outside of what his will, what he has for you, he will redeem you, and he will keep you at his right hand, but stay at his right hand. Do not go back to the old ways or going into the worldly ways of doing things. Stay with God, and he will show you the supernatural way and the spiritual way in which he will remove the veil from your eyes so that you will be able to see what he has in store for you and the plans that he has for you. We go on to verse Isaiah 41, 13, for I, the Lord, your God will hold your right hand. Okay. Saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord and re your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sled with sharp teeth. You shall thresh mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Okay. And for those of you who don't know what the threshing sledge is, is it's pretty much the purpose of threshing was to separate unusable grain from the waste straw or chaff. This was usually done by spreading the stalk of grain several inches deep on a smooth, flat area that was on a high piece of ground open to the wind. Specially shod animals walked around on these stalks until the grain was separated from the holes, okay? And so I've taken this straight out of uh, my Bible that had like a Bible reference for that to make sure that you guys get an understanding, okay? And so also in the scripture, which I just read, especially Isaiah 41, 15, it's basically saying God promised to make his people into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth in you and judgment on those who oppress the godly, okay? So the Lord is not playing about when he says, I am removing people from certain positions. I am taking them off those mountains, those high places in which they thought they were going to be able to sit and reign forever. And I am putting my people in those positions. I'm raising them up from the ground onto the floor up to these positions that they didn't even have to toil for. OK, because I'm going to move them right into those positions and they are going to reap what the other people have labored on behalf of my people. Right. So then also in Isaiah 49, I mentioned this in one of my last videos talking about the quiver, but it says. In Isaiah 49, 1, listen, O coastlands to me, take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, okay? Like I stated before, the Lord has called you by name from the womb. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. So the Lord, even though you have been hidden during this time, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this. Even though you have been hidden, 
He hid you on purpose, okay? Because he had to reform you, okay? He had to prune you, all right? He had to purify you and sanctify you. So while you've been sitting out here feeling like everybody is passing you up, don't worry about it because the last shall be first and the first shall be last. He has been hiding you, okay? He has been springing you back like the arrow and the bow so he can shoot you forward into this season because he is opening the case for his people Thank you, Holy Spirit. He is shaping. He's been shaping you and springing you back in that bow and arrow to shoot you forward. Okay. Into these positions of authority, wherever he has called you, whatever anointing that he has put on your life and called you into the area to go into out in this world. He is going to fulfill it during this time. Okay. And he said to me, you are my servant. O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work with my Lord or my God, it says right here, okay? And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him. So the Israel is gathered to him for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Indeed he is. It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. And I will also give you as a light, okay, to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One, to him who man despised, to him whom the nations abhors, to the servant of the rulers, kings shall see and arise, and princes also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. All right. So the Lord is saying that it don't matter what these people have to say. Okay. What people have been saying about you, the Lord is faithful and he is going to do what he said that he is going to do in the mighty name of Jesus and nothing can stop his hand because he's already chosen you to be the light unto the world okay to minister unto his people in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that this blesses you I pray that it uplifts your soul and it encourages you to go seek the Lord and see what his will is for your life in the mighty name of Jesus I hope you have a blessed day amen